This is Kiwa Island, and later on this day, we would be playing the ocean course from the championship tees. By the way, Alan, thanks for the shirts. Eli actually doesn't know yet why we're here. I just told him we needed to go to the beach and film me dramatically handing him a bag, which I executed pretty well. But we'll come back to all this later. We need to start at the beginning. It all started with a phone call back in February, and the phone call was from Ryan Ogle. Ryan is the championship director at the PGA of America, and he's a listener of our podcast, and he called us about visiting Kiowa. And we don't quite remember exactly whose idea it was, but we left that conversation having decided to play the ocean course from the championship tees and filming the entire thing. And a few days after this, Eli and I started to realize what we just signed up for. We accepted. In about half a second. And then we got off the phone and then we did some research and we found out (laughs) that in 2012, just make sure I have this right. In 2012, where Rory won the PGA Championship at, at Kiowa, the tips were 7,676 yards. Just the... I've never had a number scare me that much in my entire <laughs> life. That was nine years ago. Yeah. I mean, is it, yeah. it going to be 8,000 yards? It's not quite 8,000 yards, but it's close. The championship tees are 7,876 yards which will make it the longest course in major championship history. The ocean course is regarded as the hardest course in maybe the world, featuring the most holes that border the ocean this side of Scotland. And on top of that, co-designed by Pete and Alice Dye, they decided to keep the course raised on the sand dunes, making it even more susceptible to the ocean winds than a normal seaside course. So it was clear, we needed to prep. We first needed a goal. We already pre-named this event the Miracle on Sand. So what would qualify as the Miracle? Well, Eli's a five, I'm a six, Ryan is a seven. So we decided that breaking 90 individually would be a miracle, but that our primary miracle would be team-based. And that would be to break 80 as a team in a better ball, taking our best score for each hole. We asked Ryan if he wanted in. You are in? You are in in on this? Is that, is, oh, no is that doubt. a real thing? Well, I need something that when I'm, you know, in my pocket, I need to have something to root for, right? <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. What are we All going right, for? That's question, so is that too lofty of a goal for a three-person best ball against the course? No, I think we can do that. I think we have to. We named ourselves Team Wet Towel. I'm not going to explain why. The Velcro no. We then went on to talk some team strategy. Ryan gave us some wisdom on what he already knew we needed to be prepared for, including this little nugget if the winds were bad. There's probably about five or six holes that we may be laying up to the forward teeth, you know, and then hitting three woods from there. I, 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 I thought about that. I was like, man, how hard is it to lay up to the tee box? Because um, I was out there the other day talking to my caddies. I'm like, hey, guys, when I'm back here, what's my, what, what hopes do I have? And they're like, just lay up to the tee box. And the caddies are the best part of this course. They do a great job, and we're really going to have to rely on them because they're the ones that have seen, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but uh, uh, people like us that think we're better than we are play from back here. <laughs> and they have some horror stories, so I'm sure they have some tips that we'll have to take them at their word. But So we were about to be those guys, those guys who play the boxes that we have no business playing. So it was time to leverage every resource we had in order to get prepared. We started by attacking the wind which is one of those things we're pretty sure we know how to do. But when it comes time to do it, we basically just end up swinging the same way with more club. So we asked our guru and founder of our religion, Adam Yum, to help refresh us. And here he is with his velvety accent, giving us the keys. So something else that I do in setup is just with my shoulder line, I will just open the shoulder line out ever so slightly and that neutralizes the path. So we have the ball back in the stance, we have the weight forwards, we have the shoulders slightly open. Those are the setup keys. And then from there, if I hit the shot, you can see a much lower trajectory. That's gonna really fight the wind and not lose as much distance. I never remember to open the shoulders. I wrote that down. Our next call was to Frederick Waddell from Titleist. 
Everyone at Titleist has always told us he's the ball guru, and he walked us through a number of questions that we typically get in a ball fitting like we're showing here. What we liked in a golf ball, our ball flight, our misses and weaknesses, to make sure we were using the right ball. Based on our conversation, we came away confident that we were Pro V1 guys, but one thing I was wondering specific to our Kiowa situation was this. Would, would a player ever switch balls for extreme conditions like wind? Uh, like if, 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 the, if, if we get out there and it's blowing 30, are we better off playing one ball? Even if like, I normally play a pro V one, should I play that ball or should, would, would it be better with a different ball? Well, golf's all about predictability, right? You want to know what the golf ball is going to do when you strike it. That's why we go practice. You know, that's why we get fit for golf clubs. That's why ideally we go get fit for our golf ball. And so our recommendation is always find one golf ball, find the golf ball that, that you're most comfortable with, fits your game and you play your best with and play it all the time. If I was going to play Kiowa with you guys, and I'm glad I'm not because it sounds super hard. Um, <laughs> but I would, I would stick with my, with my golf ball because regardless of the conditions, if it gets real windy or it's real cold or whatever it might be, whatever the challenge it might be, something that I have spent a lot of time working with and playing with, and I know what it's going to do the wind picks up, if the wind lays down, etc., that's going to help me play my best. Titleist also got us on the phone with Aaron Dill, Vokey Wedge expert. That's Aaron right there, making wedges. He actually builds the wedges for all the Titleist PGA Tour players. It's his job to analyze the surfaces of all the PGA Tour stops, the kind of grass they're playing, the firmness of the bunkers, the texture of the greens, to make sure the Vokey guys are set up correctly for each event. And he was in the middle of doing this research for the ocean course. So he gave us some tips on our wedge setup and what to look for on those Alice Dye elevated green complexes. I would say you'd be pretty safe to do two things. Um, do you have a sand wedge in your bag? I have a 5660. He's got a 5458. 58. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, if I was working with you guys, if you were tour players, I would, I would tell you based on what I would, would gather from a golf course like that with those styles of grass and, and that much sand in the soils, um, I would probably say a, a higher bounce sand wedge and a low bounce lob wedge would be a great combination. And I think when you look at a lot of tour players bags, like a Justin Thomas, who plays a 56, 14 and a 60 T at four degrees and an Ian Poulter doing a very similar setup and a Jordan Spieth doing something very similar. And these guys have really high wedge IQs. They've, they've developed a wedge matrix where the sand wedge is really to get them out of trouble. They can open up the face and use it through the grain. It's going to produce high quality shots, even when they make mistakes and misses, but they still have a low bounce option to get them out of trouble when they're green side and they are short sided or they just need to get over an obstacle. Um, so, you know, trying to find that balance is, is a really important thing, but, but also understanding when it's the right time to pull that 60 out with low bounce and when it's the right time to pull the sandwich with high bounce. I think that's really probably the more important thing. So could, could you talk about that a little bit? Uh, like when, when, when is that? I've had a lot of experience talking with tour players about how they approach certain short game shots. And I think the really, really good ones, they, they walk up to the ball with their caddies. They look at the lies. They look at the obstacles in front of them and they, they sort of determine what they're going to do before they even reach for a club. You know, a lot of times like, and, and I'm guilty of this all the time, even from the moment I started the game is just reaching in and grabbing a 60 degree before I even saw what I was up against. <laughs> and I think these guys are really good. They look at the grain patterns, you know, and I, and I, and I, I listen to these guys talk about it. They go, okay, well, it's real dark. It's coming into us. We know that it's going to be grainy. The likelihood of me pulling out 60 and catching one a little, a little heavy is, is, is pretty, pretty likely. So, you know, when you get into situations like that, it just takes one or two of those chunky shots to, to, to basically lose the bottom, you know, to, to forget how to hit high quality wedge shots. And that's where that sand wedge, pulling that thing out, opening up the face, utilizing the bounce and allowing that wedge to skip through the grain just makes your good shots, more importantly, your poor shots that much better. I'd, I've, ne I'd, I've never thought to look at the grain of the grass, except on a, mm -hmm. maybe on a putt, maybe on a putt, but on a chip for sure. So if that, if that grain's coming at you, that's just the easier that non bounce that low bounce club is going to catch. Yeah, absolutely. So when you guys go to Kiowa, they're likely to have a pretty phenomenal short game area somewhere around there. I challenge you, take some golf balls, throw them around, put yourself in some predicaments that are challenging, you know, look for, look for dark patches that face greens or pins and try yeah. and hit pitch shots and wedge shots into those places. So you can experience what that feels like. Um, 
if it's even a little damp, you're going to experience it. You're going to catch a couple fat. And then what you're going to do is you're going to try and do the opposite. And you're going to catch a couple skinny and then you're going to go, Oh, cr-. you're going to be like, Oh crap. I need my putter. <laughs> Give me that hybrid. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tricky place to, it's a tricky place to, to go, but it, it is a great place to go and learn from that golf course. Cause that's really intended. I think that's what their intention was is to put you in situations where you're going to be challenged. And then finally we went to the head doctor himself, our guy, Dr. J for a mental tune-up a few days before the trip. Very quickly, it turned into a therapy session for Eli, who was struggling with some past demons. All right, I have a question, Dr. J. Mm -hmm. So there was a a thought that crept into my head yesterday that hasn't crept into my head in a while. And I was playing, I I got the chance to get out yesterday afternoon late, played 18, and I had this, of course, a lot of what I'm doing on the range before I, I played, I'm, you know, hitting a couple warm-up balls and I'm thinking about, you know, thinking about the ocean course. And the thought crept into my head. What if Thursday just happens to be the day when the shanks just show up? <laughs> and I wanted, and I, I, I fought to kick that out, but I, if I'm just being honest, the thought crept into my head and I was like, Gosh, that would be one of the worst things on the planet. <laughs> Help me. Because it was in there. It was bouncing around. And I was fighting against it. I mean, I really was. I was going, no, that's ridiculous. We're past that. We know, thanks to Adam Way, we can correct that. But help me process through that. Well, I think anytime you're going to experience something that's important to you, you're going to feel more pressure. And that's going to invite a lot of previous negative thoughts. You know, um, so I think that's a normal thing to have before a big event. I'm sure even professionals have those thoughts and those worries. I mean, they're in, on TV. They got, well, they used to have lots of people around and things like that. But I think what you need to do is let that just kind of go in terms of accept it. Like, all right, you know, that's unfortunate thought, but nothing I can do about that right now. I'm just going to focus on playing good golf. And it's not about being positive, honestly. It's about being neutral, right down the middle. And just, hey, I'm not going to be negative. I'm not going to be super positive. Don't need you to be a cheerleader. Just focus on what you need to do to execute every shot. Have fun, but focus, you know, as you step up to the ball, get into your bubble, get into your routine, uh, walk up with real confident body language, think aggressive thoughts, let it rip. So it's, it's almost like, Eli, just look at the picture behind Dr. J of Nolan Ryan. Think of the Mm. course. It's a tag about him getting Ventura. The course is Ventura. Yeah. And then we just put him in a headlock Headlock and we just start that picture over there (laughs) in the headlock. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) And a few days later, we were there walking on the beach. And though all the rigors of our normal late 30s suburban dad lives did not allow us much practice time leading up to this day, thanks to that training that we did, we felt like we were ready. Well, almost ready. We needed to do one more thing. I needed to dramatically hand this bag to Eli. And what happened next, we did for Carl.
Eight days later, I was back in North Carolina and Eli was back in Kentucky. And we decided to tell the story of our round in Kiowa with a podcast tradition. We've never done a dual dramatic reading of the scorecard, but that is what we are doing today. The first ever joint dramatic scorecard reading. This is chasing scratch history right here. All right, Eli, let's do this. You are looking live at us driving down Ocean Course Drive. Mm. Not sure if that's the name of it, but it should be. Being intimidated by all the PGA signs, and then we arrive at the course, and then we put on our shoes. Kudos to you, Footjoy. Those shoes were cash, by the way. Very cash. We get to the Pyramid of Balls um, for our range session here. Then shuttled over to the putting and chipping green. Look at you just draining putts. Yeah, actually, Lenny, can you slow this down? I'd like to see this a few more times. And maybe put on put on some R&B. Mm. It's a good look right here. This is how I imagine myself looking. Whenever you think you look a certain way, then you see yourself on video and you don't. But from this angle, how my all white shoes look, my, my stroke looks good on this one. I feel like if someone could only see me from this exact crop angle, <laughs> they might think I know what I'm doing. I'll be, I'll be honest, the all whites, if this wasn't a team format, the all whites would have intimidated me. I'll be completely honest. But <laughs> as a symbiotic partner, they got me excited. That's good. That's good. Anyway, putting stroke felt good. Look at you oh, making a putt. Oh, wait a minute. Play that back. Okay. Is that my putting stroke? <laughs> Is that my finish? <laughs> <laughs> well, just wait. That's not the worst one. How we haven't that, even. It, how does it get worse? That's the worst <laughs> thing I've ever seen. I, I don't want to go on with this part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then. <laughs> mm. Then we spend some time chipping and pitching, getting used to the pass palm. Kudos to you, Aaron Dill. We're feeling good. Mm -hmm. And we head mm -hmm. to the first tee. 396, one of the easier holes on the course, and the wind is calm, and it's time for us to take advantage. So Ryan is the first up. <laughs> mm. Beauty. Look, at Look at our partner. It's Splitsville right down the middle. That's Ryan Ogle, everybody. He's the championship director. This is his course. He sleeps 40 feet away. <laughs> Told you, you All right, right, now my first shot again. Look at him. I'm feeling feeling pretty calm right now. You look good. Mm. That doesn't look good. <laughs> I was supposed to heard, aim down the right side. That is hooking left. I heard a get right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now your shot. Me play. Me playing the 12 degrees outside fade that I never play. That was extremely reassuring. But, hey, right down the middle. That's right. And we're off. So we get to my ball. It's in the hazard. So I drop here in the waste bunker, hit my third about 30 yards short of the green. Then we get to, we get to your second shot. You've got 135. Prime position and just block it right. <laughs> Blocked right into the bunker. So then here's Ryan from a yard closer. Ryan's got a good looking swing, by the way. Mm. This looked great in the air, but it's over the green in some high grass near, near the water behind the green. So then this is, here's me. This is my fourth shot. And <laughs> I, think I, I just want, I think I remember what this did. <laughs> told Jeff, I told my brother, Jeff, who was helping us film. I said, I'm going to make this. Oh man. And I didn't then, know that. And then right about here. I had about seven different shots I tried to play. <laughs> seven different styles of chips. You didn't even know that there was that many styles of chips to play, but I did. <laughs> and then this happened. <laughs> hey, look, it was wind. You never know when that when that eight club wind's going to pop up. You got to keep it low. <laughs> Bladed over the green into the water that would. That would result in a quad to start. By, by the way, what what were you thinking right here? Was it, I mean, was there, because this is the first hole, you've got Caddy seeing you, Ryan seeing you. Were you embarrassed? Were you angry? Were you like, ah, it's no big deal. I'll, I'll play through it. My, I, I was, I was kind of like in the no big deal. Like, I'm okay uh, right now. Okay. I'm okay. So then we get to you. You're in the bunker. I'm going to make a statement. Yeah. 
shot, shot Eli. Best bunker shot I've ever seen you hit. <laughs> yep, completely agree. So, thanks to your par, we're even through one. And we head to the par five second. 557 yards. It's a three shot hole. Eli, you have the honor. 12 degree outside fade. But it's faded right into the fairway. Was Second first. fairway in a row. Good Ryan. Ball. He, he, he takes the long way across. He's in the bunker short. And then here comes me yeah. right off of my quad. <laughs> oh, my That's the don't hit it left swing, and that That's is dead that right. Speed. Listen to what Ryan says right here. In the corner. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the concession on eight. We, are. <laughs> <laughs> we were hoping it was in the concession stand on eight. It was not. It was lost. So here's your second shot. It's a, this is a three-shot par five. You're just trying to lay it up. Yeah, good decision. Uh, I'll turn Go left way. of the tree, or that was the goal. I went right into it and into the junk. Yeah. You. So okay. you're you're out of play. I'm out of play. Here's your drop. Oh, get down. Get did you see down. that? Did you see all that sand fly up where I where I hit a nice? <laughs> oh no, there was no sand. I scooped it completely. Just hit a. I hit a freaking. Don Mattingly liner. <laughs> Ryan also had to drop. Here's his shot. This one was almost special. That's a good swing. That's it. Oh, I remember that. That's good. right. Oh, yard. Beauty. Oh. Oh, no, 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 Hit the front, ran all the way down ah. the false front. Wow. I mean, that had that to literally been, be. That would have been huge. <laughs> yes. All right, this is, this is my seventh shot. <laughs> it's a great shot, though. Was it? <laughs> it was almost a great shot. <clears throat> and it was another quad for me. So I opened up quad, quad. I'm eight over. That's a good start. I, I could par out for 80 uh, <laughs> the last 16 holes. Then we go to you. This is your. Oh, this was a good shot. This was your fifth shot. Good out. Way to stay aggressive. Uh, My favorite was when, he, when, when Ryan the caddy says, way to stay aggressive. Way to stay aggressive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well played, Ryan. Well played. <laughs> you get you get in for seven, meaning we need Ryan to avoid a double. Come on, Ryan. Get Ryan. Turn. Go. Ryan's putt yeah. doesn't turn, and we double. The second hole, we're two over after two. Not exactly the start we were hoping for. So we then go to the third hole, another scorable par four. You and Ryan both find the fairway off the tee, and then I come up, and I'm coming off two straight quads here and four lost balls in, in two holes. <laughs> All the confidence in the world. And I just want you to listen to what happens after I hit this shot. Great. Good ball. Great. Beautiful there. Good swing. Yeah, good tempo. Oh, oh, this was great. This was a great tempo hole. I had some things to say about this coming up the fairway. Your, your third hole swing was awesome. Just do whatever you did on that. <laughs> well, not, but see, now it's like I have a disease and people are praying for me because that's, that, that's, that's, the, that's the treatment I got on the third hole because I... <laughs> That almost made me spit water. I opened up quad quad. So, so then any good thing you do, everyone's like, oh, great job. Mike, fantastic. You're, doing, you're looking good. Great swings. Great swings. Great, 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 great swings. You said great, great tempo. tempo. You're great, great tempo. tempo. Brian gave a great tempo. <laughs> the only thing missing from that was an oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. What a, what a swing. You hit the fairway, Mike. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> So, <laughs> so anyway, that might be my favorite piece of audio we've recorded in four <laughs> years. So you par three, you continue to carry us early, but then we <laughs> bogey four and then we get to five, uh, the par three fifth. And I just put this up. We had, we had a little bit of a camera problem on five with the, with the, with the sun. We were actually on the sun. <laughs> we're on the red planet. <laughs> I wanted to explain these nets. These nets are protecting where the championship tees will be. Every other hole we played behind the nets. 
mm-hmm. but there was actually no grass behind the nets on this hole, so we played in front. It's playing like 195, but all mm-hmm. three of us make double, including this well-balanced shot. <laughs> <laughs> the, that I, I, think that's how, I think that's how most of the PGA pros teach you to follow through. <laughs> So, Eli, we're five over. We're five over after five holes. We have to mm-hmm. – all we can be is seven over. <laughs> Not a great start. We have to rally. Lenny, cue the rally music. It starts right here on the par mm. four sixth. After another bad drive, I've got this for my third shot from about 48 yards. Good. Oh. Oh. Almost goes in. It's a kick in par. It definitely danced in the hole a little. Good shot. We're five over through six. Love it. Gosh, that was that was a great angle. Then we get to seven. We get to hole seven, par five, 579 yards. This is your fourth shot. Oh. It is. Just a beautiful Seekman. We stay at five over through seven. We then go to the par three eighth plane 198 and every single one of us misses to the right in the huge waste bunker. I splash out to about 15 feet. Jarhead. And Scotty makes the putt. Jill and Hall. Come on, Scotty. Par, baby. And I completely miss and leave Ryan hanging there. (laughs) Ryan, I'm sorry. Just leave him hanging. Did you get that on film? (laughs) So we par, that's three straight team pars. We're five over through eight and we go to the ninth, the 514 yard par four ninth. You and I, you and Ryan are in the fairway and I am here. It, these are the type of shots you were born to play though. It was a great punch, but it was a quad. <laughs> My third quad of the front nine. <laughs> Ryan, by the way, on this 514 yard par four has this putt. For birdie. Mm. Gosh, good putt. It's a par. Good roll, right? And we have now made four straight pars, and we make the turn in five over. Come on, baby. Come on. I do have to show this clip. It's our cameraman, Wiggins, and he's just asked you how many balls you lost on the front. Listen to <laughs> this. Listen to this. Well, yeah. Okay, so numbers on the front, you go out with a very respectable 45. Ryan and I go out with 54s. I'm eyeing the course record for quadruple bogeys, but as a team, we've got momentum right now. And we march forward to the par 4 10th, where you had the only par putt, and it's right here. Let's see that beautiful stroke. Oh my gosh, I just threw up in my mouth. That was actually your best stroke of the day. That's hideous. And it just and it just missed. So that takes us to six over through ten, and then I step up to provide some incredible leadership. <laughs> I want everybody to commit to not hit any more bad shots. Can you commit to that? I commit to that. I draw a line. Line. Line on the camera. I like this. No more bad line shots. Sand, baby. No Let's more go. bad shots. We called it. So then on the next hole, par five eleventh, we have three looks at par. First is Ryan. Gotta have him, Ryan. Get Ryan. And you can also see the wind is picking up. Oh my time. gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, my ball. putting stroke. <laughs> Last chance. Come on! Oh. Dagger. Did not move. So... We are now seven over. We have to par in for 79, mm-hmm. and we're just about to play the hardest par fours on the course <laughs> into a crosswind. So we move to the 12th, mm-hmm. 484 there yards. We we're just trying to hit the fairway. Right. And we all hit bombs. There it is. Got a 
great drives, but we would all have over 220 yards left. So Eli puts it in the water to the right. Ryan is in the bunker, mm -hmm. and it is on me from about 220. This shot right here. Viewers, tell your kids about this. You, you were, you were here. Look at him, the confidence. Couldn't see it from back there. BC said it might be in the hole. Ends up about 15 feet away. <laughs> we have to finish seven over par to win Team Miracle. This hole 12. This is the best birdie look we've had all day. I've contributed little. We've been riding you last back. It's time for me to do something. Mm. It's time for me to do so straight. Okay. Just BC gives me the read. Yeah, go on a little lap. This would get us to six over and provide a little bit of breathing room. I almost fall in the w in the water right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> there were seven thousand crocs <laughs> waiting down below. <clears throat> Good view here. Gotta have great it. View. Exclusive Neil real estate behind me. <laughs> I mean, it looks good. It does. It look looks great. really good. It's starting not to look that good. Yep. <laughs> it turned hard left, hard left. But we do par. We're seven over through twelve. So now we go to 13, we're walking backwards for what feels like forever. I'm gonna let- Yeah, can I make a statement? Yeah. This is the hardest hole I've ever played in my life. I mean, I'm no sarcasm. That's the hardest hole I've ever well, played. Well, we're, we're gonna talk about what, what your mindset here in a second. Let's, let's let Ryan or Caddy explain, yeah. explain this hole. So that's where we have to basically try to be. 40 to get to the fairway. So you gotta pummel it to get into the grass. What is it to the fairway? About 240. See, this is, the, this is one of the holes that. I would tee up on this side and try to hit it at the far left bunker. That's your shortest cut. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hardest hole I've ever played in my this life. This is one of the best holes in the world. The far left bunker. Far left bunker. That gives you a real little cut. Okay. Come on. That's too much. Come on, baby. Can't see anything. Come on now. Oh. I can't, Come on I can't now. tell you how excited I was to get the thumbs up that I was in the thing. Then Ryan. Good. Nice. That's your best today, Ryan. Ryan also gets the thumbs up. I kind of. Yeah, you guys had a super wide open. I got into that one. Yeah. Team Team Wet Towel is rallying right now, and then you you come up and you say this. I'm just gonna I'm gonna make a statement, and you're not gonna like it, but I'm not in a good headspace right now. I'm not in a good headspace. You're in a great headspace. All right, stop right there, Eli. We we've got a par out here. You've been playing, you're playing better than all of us. Like what, help me understand what happened here. Dr. J is not happy at all with what you just said as you're walking up to the ball. Expl Dr. J, I'm sorry. There's no excuse on this one. That was, that broke like 87 rules that you set for us over the last year. Um, I'll tell you what's going through my head. It's the slippery slope of hitting a fade all day when your natural ball flight is not a fade. And I knew on the last hole, the fade started to get a little too fadey. And I thought, it's not, it's gone. It's like it's a French fry with it's too much potato. Gone. It was like the, it was like the, it's like the line, the, the difference between a great barber 
and the guy that makes you look like you put a bowl on your head. Um, it was that kind of fake. And I knew that the bowl was on my head, and I was just trying to audibly get it out there and own it in the hope that I could overcome it. All right, let's see, let's see if that worked for you. Remember that headspace talk? <laughs> I could have, if you gave me one billion dollars. <laughs> I, I don't even know what you were going to finish that. If you gave me one billion dollars, what? You couldn't hit the fairway it's, there? It was irrelevant. It was a negative comment. <laughs> it was a negative comment. So you're out of the hole. It's up to me and Ryan. This was my par chip. Caught about Come 13 on, feet so of grass before. Right at the <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> we need this for par. Great putt, but it's a bogey. Right. Hey, good, good and that puts us at eight over. Bogey, We're right. eight over headed into 14. Not a lot of margin. Par three. All right, so we all missed the green. This is me. You can see the elevation of the green. And Aaron, this is my favorite shot of the day. Come on, come on. Oh, man, that is. Oh, yeah. oh gosh, that's cash. <laughs> so we got that. we got that for par. Here's you from the other side of the green and a good wedge shot. So we've got two looks at par to stay at eight over. Cue the cue the train wreck music. I'm getting ready to putt Viewers, again. close your eyes on this one. What is that follow through? But it's it's a pretty good, if, if you hit it, you made it. Gosh, that's such a hideous putt. <laughs> All right, now here's me from about six and a half feet, I'm gonna call it. It's gotta, it's gotta go. When this par putt missed on 14, all the dramatics were over. So I'm taking back over as narrator. The miracles were now insurmountable tasks. None of us were going to break 90 individually, and we certainly weren't going to break 80 as a team. As we played the final stretch of holes, the high winds and the fatigue wore on all of us. We would double each of the last three holes to finish with a team 87. But we also realized we were playing one of the coolest courses ever designed, about three weeks before the PGA Championship would be held on it. We were playing the same course that had hosted the 1991 Ryder Cup. And as we soaked up every incredible view in that last four hole stretch, it was impossible not to feel incredibly grateful for such an amazing opportunity. Ryan, kudos to you, my friend. And wherever you are, Craigers, kudos to you too. Okay, now back to us eight days after the round, discussing our takeaways. <laughs> so yeah, awesome finish. That was on. that was the Ocean Course final numbers. Eli breaks a hundred. 97 for Eli, 105 for me, 105 for Ryan. Um, interesting stat, you and I both had three pars. Really? Yes. But um, what other what other takeaways what are take, what other takeaways do we have? This course exposes your weaknesses quicker than any course I've ever played. Looking at what we just looked at on video. I kind of wish I could have seen my swing on the first hole because that is not what I've been yes. working on all off season. Like whatever just showed well, up no, there I, is not what yeah. I've been putting on. Cam like that, that's eye opening to me that when we get a little bit well, of pressure, like that's my old swing. Yes. I agree. Well, uh, my inside out swing, like that is not my problem. Yeah. And, you know, I saw several things with me and you where I was thinking, is that what, is that what, pre like, is that what, is that why we can't shoot even par? Because that crap shows up the moment there's any important shot on the line. Yeah. Like um, you, you look at every one of my swings, I'm over the top. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, pu I'm pulling, I'm pulling from the top, which is like, which is always my, which is a bad tendency, but I thought, I thought I was done with that. So yes, the fact that we never video, you know, our rounds makes me wonder, like, is this what we always do? Is this what happens at final majors? Yeah. Um, yeah. The bad habits, it's, it's whatever you're comfortable with comes out. Yeah. When the pressure is at its, at its highest. Where, where, where do we take this? 
where do we take this as we as we march on to the to our fourth season? Well, actually, I I I'm scheduled to see Larry tomorrow. It's our like first lesson of the year. Mm. Um, You're I booked it a couple weeks ago. Larry is your PGA pro. Larry's my pro, so I'm I'm booked to see him tomorrow. I honestly, I think if we spend half the lesson just looking at actual in match footage, that's I got to think that's really helpful. Um, and actually, if you can send me your stuff, I, he can, I can just have him look over both while he's there because he's never seen your swing. So, so the next day, Eli went in to see Larry Ward, PGA professional and owner of High Performance Golf in Lexington, Kentucky. Eli first showed Larry his putting stroke on video, and he had many tips for his broken follow-through. We'll hit that in detail in another episode. And then they went through a tune-up of his swing, continuing to fine-tune Eli's takeaway. If you get handle depth early, this would be depth early, handle depth. It's you mean handle depth is in practice? That's right, yeah. Okay. Then we're going to be able to get handle depth with left arm. Okay, so as soon as you go out, yeah. okay, we lose that. Now look where your arm position is. Yeah. It's out. That's not inside. Absolutely not. That's inside. That's inside. Yeah, but yeah. I can come right here. You can feel As like long as I'm opening with the body. You could almost feel like you're going to brush that right leg going back. Uh, that's just a great golf swing right there, man. Yeah. Then Eli moved on to me. Yeah, this is a good view. I, I could predict from this view some things uh, probably about his game. I would say by seeing those three swings and getting this good, you know, quality of camera angle, quality of view is so important to be able to break a swing down. This is so good. I would say, you know, that, that he doesn't hit it nearly as far as he should for his strength. Um, you know, he could, he's leaving a lot on the a lot in the tank out there. I mean, he could hit it so much farther. And what makes you say that? Um, I don't feel like that, that I, I feel like his golf swing's a little short for my like, for, you know, um, his age and, and uh, what he's trying to do. Um, I would I would definitely uh, like to see it lengthen a little bit. And uh, I think that he's out early from the top. So when he's out early like that, we're, uh, we're not staying closed in the body long enough in the transition. So when you go out early, basically everything is gone. And then the last couple of feet or the last foot and a half of the golf swing, he's just wristing it out there for the most part. Um, and that's why I think there's a big power zap there. Larry even shot me a quick video lesson with a few tips to work on. Mike, so real quick, and looking at your video, first of all, very athletic swing, very good golf swing. Sounds like you didn't have your best day. But uh, again, sometimes the wind can kind of uh, let things show up that we don't normally see. So what I was seeing there was a little short in the backswing uh, and, then a, and then out a little early in transition. So I'm gonna explain what I was seeing. So when, when you would go back, you, you had decent hip turn, decent mobility there, but because your, your chest kind of stayed down, your arm stayed short kind of in this look here, so if we, if we take that look and then we turn out early, now the golf club has no other uh, option but to get vertical and stand up on us right there. So you're fighting your, your golf swing from this point all the way down. So to create more time in your golf swing, I would like to see you extend a little more with your chest on the back swing, get it to extend up to give us more golf swing, more more arm swing there, so a little extension. And then from there, when you start down, you wanna slam into this, this left leg without closing or opening your body up rather, staying closed. So when you start down, your arms can race. They stay down in front of you with a closed body and this first motion right there would be really good for your golf swing. And a way to practice that would just be think in terms of, okay, I'm gonna extend back go down and stop so your elbow beats your side, elbows in going towards your belly, and then from about right in there, you would push off the left leg, rotate around all the way to the finish, hit some little soft shots. I think this will get you help going in the right direction. Eli sent me this video and we talked about it the next day, and we said many things, some of which we'll get to in season four of the podcast, but we ended up right here. 
right here back in Optimisticville, USA. I'll just say this. We're going to make Scratch nervous this year. I like it. You're an idea guy. You thrive on positivity. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, I got it all. <laughs> do you have any cold candy bars? Yeah. I'll do a Milky Way if you've got one, please. Don't have Milky Way. Let me go check. Sometimes we have one. Hey, thank you. Two, Mars family. Three, I don't know how many times four, we have to say this. Five, Chasing scratch. Six, what else five, do we have to do to earn your business? Milky Way. Oh, Milky Way. Good. I'll take a Milky Way as well. Okay. Ooh, there we go. It's good tempo. That's better. Hey. I gave him the tempo again. Good. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I mean, I can throw Ryan, a tee. Ryan is deadly with these tees. <laughs> yeah. That's felt, like a James Bond villain. I like. felt it breeze my retina. Yeah. But. Hey, team. So you want to drive three or wood. three wood? Give me that three wood. Three wood. Let's go. Yes. Maybe I should change to a practice ball before I do this. No, oh, man. <laughs> Tried to play a draw. I don't think he can do it. Where's, where's, Cut. <laughs> 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 Cut. And are, are you specific? Are you personally the wedge stamper? I am. Yeah. So did did you uh, was it your idea for Zal Torres to put uh, Mr. Gilmore on your caddy? No, you know, <laughs> you know, it, before before it was Mr. Gilmore on your caddy, it was actually Beavis. So you can tell there's a there's a theme, you know, <laughs> based based on his looks. <laughs> so you know, he, awesome. he, he's he's got a great sense of humor. Hopping and hopping and hopping. That was the worst putt ever hit. <laughs> you about missed the ball on the putt. What's that? What? No, nothing. You almost missed. Did you see it? <laughs> you almost missed the ball. You, did. Did. you, did you hit, hit the that top bump? of the ball. I thought it hit the bump right in front. No, no, I think you hit the top of the ball. Oh, no, it, hit, it hit the no, it hit you hit, the, you hit the top, so you hit top. So you. <laughs> we were we'll watching video proof of that one. Well, I thought it hit my divot. Because it went right over my dick. Uh, I think that you hit the top no, of the ball. I didn't hit the top of the ball. Inside right? It's Inside my right. Dick. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. You hit the top of the ball.